Check out this gorgeous copper ale. Let's brew it. Hey now, I'm super excited. Today I'm brewing my favorite go-to multi easy drinking beer. It's a copper ale. This was first introduced to me by my good friend Duncan, one of the best brewers I know, who had come up with this recipe. Extremely simple, easy to brew, very easy to drink, great for any time of the year in any situation. It's nice and toasty. It's got some beautiful toffee flavors in it. It has just enough bitterness to carry through some of that residual sweetness. And just talking about it, I'm salivating. So let's get brewing it. The grist for this is quite simple. I've got my base malt here, which is just a North American two row. I'm going with raw malting because it's locally available and I really like it. I find it makes great beers. I've got 10% of Munich malt. I'm going with Canada Maltings Munich. It's 10% it's 10 degree lava bond and works really well in this style of beer. And then you want some crystal malt. I've got 5% of that. I'm going with the Crystal 75 from Great Western Malting. A person could play around with this. Maybe go with a C40, you could go with a C60 or 80, anything like that. This is a rather forgiving style of beer. It just depends what sort of crystal flavors you're looking for. I'm gonna be milling this up on my Monster Mill 3mm Pro, which is gonna make really quick work of this malt here. I love having this hopper extension. Ta-da! So on the brew stand here, I have the old strike water set at 67.8 Celsius or 154 Fahrenheit. Just kind of that nice middle of the road mash temperature, which should be, you know, fairly attenuable. However, still leaving some hopefully nice residual body in this beer. I'm going to get this mixed up. I do have some pH stabilizer, some of the 5.2 pH stabilizer in here, just to help ensure a de decent mash pH. This is just a single infusion beer, which is really easy. I'm doing this obviously on kind of the fancy brew stand, but a person could very easily do this in, you know, a brew, your, brew in a bag system or in a cooler mash tun system like I used to. Very, very simple. Just started that research there. I should mention that my strike water temperature was a few degrees Celsius hotter than the actual mash temperature just so that I could hit it right on. Now I'm gonna give this an hour mash time. We're hitting the end of that 60 minute mash. Now I am going to set this up to 75 Celsius or in that 168 Fahrenheit range just to do a quick mash out. And after a 20 minute mash out rest, it's time to start. Switch over my lids here. Hello, first runnings. That is a pretty color. Flame on! Woo! So, we got all of the volume that we need in the boil kettle, which is 50 liters in this case. And I'm just going to get what I need here for my Irish moss. We've just hit our boil, it's gonna be a 60 minute boil. I'm adding 60 grams of Mount Hood hops at 6.0%, a lot of sixes and zeros going on here. Whew, got a little foamy there. And that's going to give us the 22 IBU that we want in this beer. After 60 minutes, I've just killed the heat. Going to dump in that's 28 grams of, again, Mount Hood hops. It's just going to give it that nice, clean Mount Hood hop aroma. And after those hops go in, just give it a nice whirlpool there. Going to cover it up here with the lid and give it right around 15 minutes just to settle out. And now we are running off. So I'm just rousing this up here. I'm giving it a minute of this aeration and that's going to be sufficient for this sort of gravity of a beer for the fermentation to take off and be totally fine. If it was a high gravity beer or something like that, I would definitely be oxygenating, but this aeration method will work totally fine. Now after aerating, I've got this rehydrated yeast. I just, when I was pressure cooking my plate chiller for this, uh, for the brew today, I also pressure canned just a little bit of filtered water. That's what I used for rehydrating here. I'm using Safail SO4. Lots of different yeast strains would work for this. Anything sort of either clean or kind of like US clean or UK relatively <laughs> clean. A little bit of extra production is totally fine and welcome in this beer. So that's what we're going with here. I like the SO4. It's a, a really great powerhouse of a yeast. Gets the job done nice and quickly. 
It's also a really good flocculator, so that helps wind up with a clearer beer in the finished product, which is super nice as well. Here we go. So we, we're at the intended fermentation temperature of 68 degrees, which is why I am comfortable getting this in here and let fermentation ensue. Original gravity on this copper ale reading below the meniscus comes in at 1045. That's perfect. The next morning we are comfortably at High Krausen. I also have the whole setup here with the temperature controls, the blow-off tubes, the heat wraps, and we're holding at a steady 68. Reading below the meniscus, the forced attenuation test for this copper ale is coming in at 1011, which should be an awesome finishing gravity. We'll see how the actual beer turns out. And reading below the meniscus here on the copper ale, the finishing gravity here is 1011, so that matches the forced attenuation test. That is fantastic. Now after this copper ale hit high Krausen, I let the temperature creep up to 72 degrees Fahrenheit, so that took about four or five days, and then I held it there for a week, killed the temperature, let it crash down a little bit. Everything sort of came out yeast-wise. It's dropping out. Kind of hard to tell in the video here, but it's getting a little bit clear. And I am now just pressure, pressure racking out of the carboys and into a couple of kegs. After pressure racking into those kegs, I chilled them down, gelatin fined, let them sit for a week, transferred into carbonation kegs, got them carbonated. All those processes, I have specific videos in the brewing playlist on the channel if you want to check that out. But for right now, it's the moment of truth. Pretty beer. I love that Crystal 75. It's that interesting overlap between the caramel and the toffee sort of flavors there that the Crystal Malt can provide. And that really comes through in the aroma on this beer. It's sort of the dominant aroma. Not super, super aggressive or anything like that. Just gently assertive in the background. And then you get like a tiny little bit of fruity esters because of that SO4 yeast. Absolutely delightful. So it's got, again, the caramelly toffee flavors coming out of that C75. It finishes with some of that toastiness coming out of the Munich malt. It's got that really nice, clean North American two row in there. And the Mount Hood hops give it just enough bitterness, clean bitterness, super drinkable. And this goes great just on its own. It can be paired with almost any food. Really, really a versatile beer. Malt forward, just enough hops to make it drinkable, and super fantastic. This is one of my go-to beers that I like to have on tap. It's a crowd pleaser, even for those lighter beer drinkers that show up and they're like, I don't like hops or something like that. Super fair perspective, and um, yeah, they really enjoy this. So give it a whirl if you like, and perhaps this will be one of your favorite go-to brews. So till next time, keep it at 11.